Today I'm going to cover the uh, Ishinru basics. Okay, um, you know you'll hear them referred to as different names: the charts, the basics, the keyhone. Um, really doesn't matter what you call them. Pretty much everybody's in, usually doing roughly the same things. Um, <clears throat> a couple of points on the basics. Realize the word basic. They are basic techniques. So. They were created after the kata, long after the kata. The reason the basics were created is how do you teach a large group of individuals, you know, a kata? It's very difficult when they don't even know how to throw a basic punch. So what they did was they pulled moves from the kata, okay, and then they created the upper and lower body basics. All right, so this video will cover the upper body basics. All right, um, we'll show them the basic way that most people in Ishinru are doing them, and then we'll show them a little bit different, um, try to get you, especially if you're an instructor or a longtime practitioner of Ishinru, trying now to get you to think a little bit outside the box and elevate your uh, ability level, all right? Um, just to be clear, um, I know in a lot of these videos, I don't wear a gi. The reason I don't wear a gi is I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, gi is kind of noisy, number one for videos. Number two, um, a lot of guys focus when they're generating power, they're focusing on creating that gi snap instead of uh, paying attention to what their body is doing. Okay, so I don't think uh, a lot of times the gi helps us. Um, plenty of photos of the founder of our system, Tatsuo Shimabuku, just training in, in a t shirt in his backyard. Okay, so. So let's start with uh, basic number one. So basic number one, again, when I start okay. the basic, notice my arm is fully extended, all right? Uh, I see a lot of this type of punching in Ishinru. Again, ridiculous, okay? Master Shimabuku punches like this, okay? I have video and um, photos of Angi Weizu where his arm is extended, okay? So I don't know where this idea of this short punch came in, but it's something we want to you avoid. Can rotate the Same hips. Thing. So if I can rotate my hips very fast, my power increases dramatically. Basic number two, we're going to be here. We're going to step, same crescent step, same crescent step. And now we're going to do the uppercut. All right. So again, for the beginner, they're just doing this. No other action in the body. It's their first night in class. I'm teaching them maybe the first four basics. So you see, That's it. So, so I'm here, side. and now this is coming up. So see the rotation, but this is also coming up from here. So if you want to stop it here, that's fine. From the side, it looks like this. is creating the power. I'm not just using arm, arm. Okay? So that's... Pretty much 13. I strike to the collarbone. That's my favorite way of doing it. But again, sometimes I switch it up and strike to the side of the neck. 14. So we mentioned that all the basics come from the kata. So what kata does the 14th basic in Ishinru come from? So the answer is it's Wansu. So this portion of Wan Su that everybody now does like this, punch, punch with straight punches. Tatsuo used to do like this. Okay? So for me in my Wan Su practice, and eventually when we get to that video, I will show you that variation. Okay? So another thing about the 14th basic, most people do this parry, which is Great, okay? It, it makes sense to do the parry. It's also introducing the parry, which, which is great, because the parry is going to become a big thing in certain self-defense techniques, okay? But when I first went to Okinawa and I was going through the basics, when Master Shimabuku got to 14, he didn't do the parry. So he just came out and he just went one, two. And then he went out and he just, he just went one, two. Our left arm is going to be over our right arm like this, and... This elbow goes to the front, this goes here. Okay, this stuff 
is new. This is not how the basic was taught. The other idea that I hear is there are no advanced techniques. Again, an amazingly dumb statement, all right? I'm training 45 years, all right? There, when you first start training, every single technique seems advanced. Think about it. You walk in the school, you only know one way to fight. You've had no training, so natural, like if you've been in a few scraps as a kid, you know, and you, you, know, beat, you got lucky, you won, you lost, whatever, you only fought the way your instinct told you to fight. Now you're coming into the dojo, and now they're putting these restrictions on you. Oh, no, no, when you punch, your elbow has to be in. Don't let your elbow go out. And everything seems like, oh, my God, this is overwhelming. I got to remember all this stuff. So even the basics seem advanced in the beginning. But then as the months go on and you're practicing the basics and you're starting to get a feel for it, and if you have a good instructor, he's teaching you how to generate proper power and you're working on it, now you're not thinking so much about doing the basics. The basics are like, oh yeah, these aren't so bad. Now I decide to teach a technique in self-defense. And now the technique is very hard. And people are struggling. Sensei, could you look at this? I'm having trouble doing it. Okay. Six months later, when people are working that technique, hmm, they're not having so much trouble with it. So there are advanced techniques. Any technique that you haven't done is an advanced technique. Okay? Then what you do is you learn it and you work on it. And guess what? Eventually, it doesn't seem so advanced. 